uh, for being here with us today, Mr. Davidson, appreciate it. Um, I do want to reiterate to you uh, and, and re-extend and extend, and I understand that we are working on a visit to West Virginia, uh, hopefully maybe in the summer. It's a great place to visit. So I, I know we're working on that, and good. I look forward to I'm also visiting New Mexico this summer, I understand. So. Well, good. Uh, just good. don't want to play favorites here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, my first question was going to be on uh, statements that you made during your nomination about the um, uh, all of the above uh, technology. I heard uh, Senator Lee ask basically the same question. Uh, we had the same questions in that your first notice of uh, funding opportunity appeared to put a heavy, a heavy uh, foot on the pedal for fiber, which is great for West Virginia, but very expensive and not sure it's going to get to that last house. Uh, but you, you've already, uh, you know, wireless uh, may solve some problems. Uh, I'm going to assume wireless is an all of your above um, bucket. Uh, how do you see wireless as it's moving in the next uh, funding opportunities? Well, I, we do expect that for different states, different states will have different mixes of technology. Right. We heard a little of that answer. We we talked about that as well. Right. And we do think that fiber is, the, it is the gold standard, is the most uh, extensible, resilient, but for many areas it will not be the right answer. Mm -hmm. And so we, we do believe we've given states flexibility to, to make the choices that are right for them. Okay. Our state was just given a notification through the American Rescue Plan of $136.3 uh, million dollars from the Treasury for, from, the re, from the rescue plan on broadband. So um, good news. Uh, it's supposed to reach uh, 20,000 people. So I'm sitting here thinking, we're going to have a we've already had an influx of money uh, through through a lot of the COVID funds. We have this new influx of money, and then of course your bigger and broader, more robust plan through NTIA. This plan is feeding into three programs that the governor's already set up. It would be really useful, I think, if the monies that come in from NTIA can fit into the buckets that are already pre-established. Will the states have the flexibility to be able to do that? Working with you all. I absolutely believe so. I think it's important that we, the only way we're going to reach our goals is if we use all the different funding streams that are available. Right. Uh, that's partly why we're work, trying to work so hard with our other sister agencies, including the Treasury uh, Department. So you're uh, working with them on this as we well? We are working with them. Yeah. And uh, the goal is to make it simple for states to, for streamlining reporting requirements, common data. Uh, and we do hope that states will plug in, plug our funding into their existing efforts. It's the only thing that will make sense. Well, that's the hope for, for West Virginia. We have a gig ready program. We have a middle mile program. We have uh, a major, you know, major projects that might be bigger and broader. So uh, I think it just makes good common sense, yes. quicker, more efficient, better reporting. Uh, at, once we get the map thing straightened out to, to be able to feed into what I think our state's already moved pretty, pretty well after we had a big stumble in 2010. I think we learned a lot. And so uh, any way that we can help and assist you with that, we would, we would like to play a role there. We welcome the chance to work with you. Good, good. Let me ask you about supply chain. We're hearing from our small rural providers that increased cost and delay of equipment is making deployment incredibly challenged. I'm concerned about these supply chain issues, what, my, what an effect it might have on middle mile or bead projects. Um, how are you seeing this? And uh, while I am a Buy America person, you have Buy America provisions in there. We are starting to hear some rumblings that that may cause some problems as well. Do you have the ability to waive by America uh, re requirements? Do you anticipate that you would be using that? And, and what can we do to help with the supply chain issue? Uh, or, or how are you uh, approaching that? Because it's going to drive the cost of these projects higher. Well, uh, first of all, we are, we are, it's a great question. We are tracking the, these supply chain issues quite closely. And we are concerned as well, especially with the big influx of funding that's going to come into this right. field. So we are working closely with providers, with equipment providers, with fiber providers to make sure we understand supply and demand in this space. Mm -hmm. um, we do also believe strongly that Buy America is an important part of the, of the law. Part of the goal of the infrastructure law was, of course, to promote American jobs, promote American manufacturing. Right. So we think that uh, we take that very seriously. We will be working, we know that telecommunications networks pose unusual challenges in that environment. So we do expect, for example, that there may well be waivers issued, but those waivers have to be done very carefully. Mm -hmm. We believe that they have to be tailored, and the bar needs to be high. We will be following the, pro the OMB process, the process that's laid out for getting those waivers within the administration. I anticipate that we will have some, but as I said, the bar needs to be high on getting them. 
Well, you have a, a I think, a very exciting and tough job ahead of you, especially <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> when your secretary is prom promising every single one of us that every one of our residents is going to have broadband by the time that this is over. This is a once in a generation opportunity. It is. Given us resources to do something that we that we that we need to do as this country. And so and we are so we are firmly firm believers. And thank you for your partnership. Yeah, thank you.